So in the Bible, it says that God created man in his own image and in his own likeness. But the more that I hear ministers talk today and the more that I hear uh, believers talk today, it seems to me that they have created gods in their own image and in their own likeness. Because when I see these preachers constantly talking about people's sexual orientation or their sexual desires, when I hear them talking about the music that people are listening to and calling that the devil's music, and when I hear them talking about movies that people are watching and saying we shouldn't be watching certain movies, and when I hear them telling us which politicians that we should be voting for, then I say to myself, they're definitely shaping their God into their own likeness and into their own image. And when they do that, they think that that should inspire us to want to come to their church, hang out with them, or worship their God. But for me, it does the exact opposite. It makes me want to walk further and further away from it. And the way they present their God, they present him in a way that I wouldn't even want to sit down and have a beer with him, let alone worship him. Because what they're essentially saying is that God looked down on the universe. He saw brain cancer in children. He could have done something about that, but he's more concerned with what two gay dudes do behind closed doors. He looked down on the world and he saw all the turmoil in the Middle East. He saw all the death and devastation and destruction going on, and he could have done something about it, but he's more concerned with the music we're listening to. He's afraid we might go watch the Barbie movie. You know, God looked down on the world and he saw all the trauma and all the abuse and all the poverty in the world, all the crime and all the corruption, and he could have done something to stop it, but he's, he's, he's going to tell us who to vote for instead. He's going to get political and say, you should vote for this guy. So they are creating God in their own image. And my question for you would be, why would God care what any of us does behind closed doors as long as we're not hurting another person? Why would God care about what music we're listening to or movies we're watching? when all of these things are going on in the world. You say you have free will. You, you say that you have free will to do whatever you choose to do in this world. Well, then by that logic, you must think God has free will too. So if God has free will, why has he not stepped in and defeated the devil? Why hasn't he just went ahead and took out that threat? Why hasn't he just went ahead and took out that evil and just restored peace on earth and love here on earth and everybody could live in peace and harmony? Why don't he just defeat death? Why don't he just let us all live forever? I know what some of you are going to say. You're going to say, well, it's all part of his plan. Well, go over to Israel right now and tell the people in Israel and Palestine, oh, this is just part of his plan. You, you all just sit through this now. You, you're going to have to figure out what his plan is. Go look at the, go, go, go to the parents who have children who are suffering from disease. Go to those parents and say, oh, well, it's just part of God's plan. God's got a plan for you. You've got to figure it out. The idea that this, this being is sitting up on a cloud and he's watching someone's child suffer, he's like, let's see if they figure out my plan. Let's see if they figure out what I've, I'm up to today. It's, it's ridiculous. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. And I can tell you that from the time I was a little boy sitting in the Pentecostal church with a Bible in my lap, following the preacher, and listening to every word he had to say, I was questioning. I was saying, why why can't he just stop all this? Why do we have to be sitting here having this conversation? Well, it's all part of his plan, Brandon. It's all part of his plan. You just got to figure it out. Well, I'm tired of trying to figure it out. I'm, trying, I'm tired of looking at all the death and destruction and sickness in this world and, and trying to attribute that to God in any way. I am much more at peace saying to you, there's nothing out there. There's nothing. We as human beings are here and we created the mess that we're in. Some of us are trying to do something about it. Some people wants to leave the planet better than they found it. And some people lives in this fantasy world that they're going to be rewarded somehow for everything they said and the rest of us are going to be punished if we disagree with them. Well, I don't want to be a good person based on this idea that I'm going to be rewarded in heaven or punished in hell. If the only reason that I'm treating people good is because I don't want to go to hell, what good is that? What good does it do me to treat people with respect and, and do good to people and help people out if I'm only doing it to find favor with God? 
if I'm only doing it so I can reserve my seat in the kingdom of heaven? How, how, is, how is that good? That's the question I have. If you're, if, you're doing, if you're doing good for those reasons, how is that good? And if you're worshiping this being who is allowing all this to happen and it's just part of his plan and we have to figure it out, that's one of the most unhealthy ideologies and it has done more damage to this world than it ever did good. Yes, there are people out there who prays and finds peace. And I know the world's a tough place to be, so whatever can bring you a little peace and comfort, go for it. I'm not going to knock you for trying. But it is a dangerous ideology to have when suddenly that God starts looking more like you than the words that's in his own book.